Now, Ian, Anthony Albanese and Peter Dutton have been warned by major energy companies that the country's East Coast energy market is facing a perfect storm of higher liquefied natural gas prices, underperforming renewable energy sources, coal plant outages and extreme weather. All of this could, of course, mean gas shortages, uh, soaring energy bills, we've already got those, and more blackouts. Uh, and again, self-inflicted because of government inaction and interventions, uh, uh, pushing renewables as the only way forward. Uh, could we have a situation where our resource-rich country runs out of gas or has a severe gas shortage? Well, yes, we've already got it. In your state, Victoria, there is an enormous amount of onshore gas in the Otway Basin and in the Gippsland Basin. I've seen in the Wombat Field, I've seen the flaring of gas from wells. That gas is only a couple of kilometres from major pumping facilities and major pipelines. That gas is not used. We've been told by the minister in Victoria that there is no gas onshore in Victoria. So that is a lie. In New South Wales, we've got massive gas reserves at Narrabri. These have got quite a bit of carbon dioxide in them, but that can be removed. And that's taken decades. And we're still not producing gas from there. And in Queensland, we've got very extensive gas fields. And I declare an interest. I'm the chairman of Senex. And the article you refer to was in The Australian. And Senex was mentioned there as one of the major gas companies in Queensland. Now, in Queensland, mm -hmm. we have to battle red tape. We have to battle green tape. We have to battle black tape. You then have to battle UN tape, uh, the blue tape. And then you've got government inaction, government indecisions. Uh, and it takes decades from an idea to actually putting gas into pipelines. This is not a shock that's happened. Oh, suddenly this winter we've got no gas. This has taken a long while to arise because of government inaction, the inability of governments to actually project that we are going to be needing gas, the inability of governments to actually use common sense and squeaky wheels making a lot of noise and these squeaky wheels are forcing governments to look over their shoulder and say, oh, there's three green votes here, they, they might not vote for us. Let's not make a decision or let's make a decision that's going to cost a fortune. So we are seeing in Australia a shortage of gas. We have thousands of years of gas in Australia. We have thousands of years of coal. We've got millions of years of uranium. Yet we've got an energy shortage. How come? And the reason for that is that we've been subsidising ruinable energy like wind, like solar, and subsidising that energy at the expense of tried and proven reliable, cheap energy like coal. And while we've suppressed our coal generation, the costs have gone up. We still have the bulk of our energy comes from coal. The backup and a large mm. amount of energy comes from gas. We still have more than 90% of the energy in Australia comes from fossil fuels. Now, the building of all of these monstrosities of solar and wind technological facilities across our farmlands has done nothing. We haven't actually made energy cheaper or more reliable. Today, I saw a whole lot of wind turbines up near Burra in South Australia. They weren't turning. So we're not pr producing electricity. Where does the electricity come from? It has to come from coal and it has to come from gas. Well, all of that infrastructure has done something. It's uh, made all our bills uh, way more expensive. So we've, we've had an impact, just not the, the one we were hoping for. Uh, Professor Ian Plymer, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you for having me.